I'm so glad to have you back for another video. Today we're going to do some fun making bubbles and I am not a great colorer so I decided I would try to figure out another way to make bubbles and here's a picture up close of kind of an inspiration that shows you how they reflect off each side. I found these Nuvo Dream Drops in my drawer and decided to give them a try for the bubbles so we're going to go over what I did and see what you think. Of course, I will link all of these things that I use today in the description below. So make sure you hit the subscribe and the like button and let's get into it. So the way that I think about bubbles when I've looked at all these pictures is I thought I could do kind of a pie shape of four different colors in the middle. Maybe mix those around a little bit and then go along the outside edge and reflect those colors back. I don't know if that's the right way to do it or not, but... I think it ended up turning out really great. So I started with Love Potion, Lemon Twist, Dragon Scales, and Indigo Eclipse. So basically a pink, yellow, green, and purple. You could add more colors. I just don't have a Dream Drop in blue. So I didn't add that in. And these Dream Drops are very interesting in how they work. So they, of course, work on white paper. And you can see their color really well on white. But if you put them on colored and dark colored cardstock, they do some really cool effects. So I decided I would make my bubbles um, on the white paper, but I also would make my background and we would play with trying these Nouveau Dream Drops on stencils and a couple of different ways like that on some blue paper. I didn't go to black, but they look amazing on black and I may try that for another video. So here I'm going back in and I am using the color opposite as that outside edge. So right here I'm going to do pink because it's opposite of this pie piece. And you'll see up there I did the purple across and all of them I did their exact opposite directly across from them. And then now I want to go back in and kind of fill in spaces that maybe have some white showing. And I'm also going to just kind of try to fade the colors into each other like you would do with markers or any type of coloring. Just so you've got good um, coverage of the whole thing. And I ended up taking my pink and adding a little bit in the middle, but also just kind of swirling the colors around in the middle because it is a sphere. So things going in a circle, um, that's kind of how the reflection works in a bubble. So I did kind of smear that around a little bit and added little pieces back in. And I'll show you the up close of this when it dries. So here it is up close. And look at all that iridescence. It just adds to the bubble effect to me. So I'm going to show you what I did with the blue paper. You can see that this will be slightly different, not quite as bright of colors, but I think it actually enhances the iridescence to put it on a colored paper. So what I started with is stenciling. So we're going to make some flat Nouveau areas on these little shutters that are going to go on our shutter card. And what I decided to do, I thought that the best looking colors and the most bubble-like were the pink, which is called Love Potion, and the purple, which is called Indigo Eclipse. Those I felt like looked the best on the blue paper when I was checking it out. So I did those two colors on these shutters and I basically just put a small amount on the end of my spatula and rubbed them to make them look as flat as possible. So it takes a little bit of time. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit further and show you the end result. Okay, and once again, to remind you, this is pink and purple Dream Drops on the blue Lawn Fawn paper. I think that these look amazing. The iridescence just really gives it an extra touch. So the other side, I think this turned out even better. I'll have to let these dry because they're moving on the part of the card that I need them on. So let's use that stencil in a slightly different way with these Nouveau Drops. I thought I might try to get some more dimension on this part of the card because this part is not moving. So I felt like those drops are okay if they're raised versus the ones that I um, did flat for the moving parts. So I went ahead and only did the pink and the purple again just to keep it consistent, but I did make them raised. Now doing this with a stencil is um, a little trickier because you need to make sure you're holding the stencil down so that parts of this don't go underneath it. And I still feel like sometimes when they're drying, you might get a little bit of a halo effect. The other thing I could have done is make sure that I stuck this down with pixie spray. I did a little bit, but not as much as I should have. 
I, once I got it laid down, we'll see what it looks like on the reveal. And if there was ever a spot that was kind of messed up, I could easily go back and add more. But see how raised those are? They look beautiful. So cool. Perfect bubbles. All right, I'm going to show you a little bit about putting this together and some things that I probably should have done and didn't do. So with this shutter card, you have little notches that are made by the die cut that shows you where this piece goes. And once you get it good and lined up, you're closing your flap. One thing I probably should have done was make myself some pencil marks so that I didn't catch that Nuvo drop right there. I could have left a couple of these Nuvo drops out, probably just saved myself some time because they're getting covered up by this little flap. So just FYI, if you get the chance and you can leave that space blank, it really leaves you not a ton of background to do on these shutter cards, which I like because sometimes filling up the background is um, effort for me. So when you put your other part on you're using whatever kind of strips this these I'm actually using score tape and I stand it up and line it up with that and then you're going to make sure with your flaps you got one side overlapping the other so these top triangles you got to make sure that they overlap correctly so one flap has a top and a bottom and then you're going to connect your thing and that holds those flaps closed. I know this is not the greatest picture but when you line this up and I really pulled on it to make sure it lined up then it opens and closes. So cool. This is a great card. I love this new die set. This is such a cool idea from Lawn Fawn. So the last thing to do with this card is to make the little band that goes around the middle and holds it closed. Since it is a shutter card, it does not close unless you have this belly band around it. So you need to do that. Lawn Vaughn, of course, includes dies that do just this. They show you how to connect them and they have little ridges where they do this. I think it looks great to do this with some coordinating cardstock. And the little middle part that says smile over there that is the center cut from the die that's on the inside of the card. So it gives you a perfect size little circle there that's easy to use. So I thought that would be kind of an easy way to connect the two. And on that smile, I also, over the blue cardstock, I used my purple iridescent dream drops just to coordinate again. I love it when a card ties together like that. Just think that makes it extra professional looking. So all that's left to do is show you how this card works and then I'm going to of course show you some up close pictures so you can get a better idea and if you have questions please put them in the comment section make sure you subscribe and like this channel I love doing these videos and I love having y'all here supporting me so please let me know if there's something specific you're wanting to see otherwise consider checking out some of my other videos and hitting the subscribe button thanks so much guys I'll see you soon